Mario Kart 2 has been out for quite some time and ever since it first came out, I've asked myself, could I create my own version of it? So I set out on an adventure to just answer this question. Here are the steps I took to make my own version of Mario Kart. Welcome to Believe in Game Dev, a channel about making better games today. To start off, I first needed to set myself milestones for the project. As the Mario Kart series has seen many features and modes, it would be overwhelming to implement everything at once. So for the first milestone I set out to recreate the time trial mode. It incorporates the core mechanics of the game and is a complete game mode in itself. So my goals were to implement the driving mechanic, get some assets to work with, polish the game, and at the time trial mode. As a first point of reference, I searched through the internet to look if I could find similar projects online. And yet there is. Unity itself has its own tutorial series on making a card game. Wonderful, but it's not focused on the making of the card game itself. It rather gives you a finished project you can then polish up. Anyways, I managed to reverse engineer the card controller they had in place and made my own variation of it. Here's how it basically works. The controller script gets an input from the player. This could be from a keyboard, gamepad or touchscreen. Holding accelerate will increase the velocity of the card in the target direction and braking will work vice versa. Steering to the left or right changes the target direction and thus the direction the card will move in. For colliding with the ground, the card shoots four ray cars downwards and checks if they are close enough to the ground and then aligns the card with the combined normals of each ray cast. With the controller working, we of course need a nice card to work with. So let's go online and download a nice model. And just like this, we have our own card. Let's add Mario along the way. Now we can drive around as Mario, how cool is that? But wait, what happened to our mushroom-eating plumber? He's only staring forward, not showing a single expression on his face. Maybe he's just a bit lonely. Here we go, now Luigi is joining him. Way better. Now let's distinguish Mario and Luigi a bit more from each other in the way they drive. How are we going to achieve this, you might wonder? Well, the answer is quite simple. In our controller script, we have many variables that we can adjust. For example, the acceleration, the maximum speed or how sharp we can turn. Utilizing scriptable objects, we can create different stats for each driver. As you can see here, now Luigi can accelerate fast, but has a lower top speed than his brother Mario. This system not only works great to create stats for each driver, but also for each card. But more on this in the future. Next up, we should get Mario and Luigi a track to drive on. With many tracks to choose from, I decided to use Luigi's circuit from the Wii. It is a pretty basic stage, but comes along with everything I wanted to implement. There are boosters, ramps and off-road sections. For these track parts to work, we can use modifiers, which are temporarily stats that get added on top of our driver stats. For example, if we were to get off the road, your acceleration speed would decrease, while it would be significantly higher when driving over a booster pad. Speaking of boosts, one of the most important mechanics in the Mario Kart series is drifting. Not only does it allow you to take sharp corners, but also you will receive a small boost after the drift. With an additional button for drifting, you can make a small hop by adding an upward force and start the drift when getting back to the ground. A script then counts the duration of the drift and will put out a boost modifier when released. Before moving on, I want to ask you what is your favorite feature in the Mario Kart series? Did you got one? Then share it with us in the comments section, I would love to hear it. To make the game more appealing, let's polish it with some additional effects. For the drift, we will let the driver lean inwards, giving the player a visual cue in which direction the car is driving. 
The receiving boost gets stronger the longer you drift. In order to indicate this, we can put on multiple particle systems. How exactly this can be done you can see on the YouTube channel Mix and Jam, where this is explained in more detail. Shoutouts to Andre. To make the booster pads look more special, we can make a small animation just by replacing the material texture over time, creating an easy but sufficient animation. And to really get into the Mario Kart feeling, we of course need the right tunes and sound effects. So let's add them. For the engine sound, I repeatedly play a small click sample, whose pitch I change according to the speed of the kart, which works really well. When drifting, there will be a sound for the wheels rubbing on the road, as well as for the sparks. And while working on the sounds, let's get Mario and Luigi some nice sounds as well. To round things up, I got a Lakito from Sketchfab that counts down at the start and shows up every time you complete a lap. With the driving implemented and polished up, it's time to focus on the time trial mode. Obviously we need a clock to count the time. From the start of the race, this clock will count and save the total time needed to complete the race, as well as the duration of every lap. Also for the start I added in a countdown. Using TextMesh Pro I created Mario font asset and with a texture on it, it looked pretty close to the original. Lastly, at the start of each time trial, you are given three mushrooms to use. As you probably guessed, we can easily add these with a mushroom modifier. And to show the player how many mushrooms there are left, we can use a simple UI image. And done, the time trial mode is completed. We now can race against the clock and see how much time we need. Let's put our new systems to the test and drive on some different tracks. Luigi already got his own circuit, so it was finally time to add Mario's as well. Mario Circuit was easy to implement with its simplistic layout, but beware of the chain charm. For a more modern track, I've chosen Yoshi Circuit from Mario Kart 8, which turned out to look quite good. And of course with the recent release of Luigi's Mansion 3, I picked the fitting track from the DS game. We covered pretty much, but there are way more features and modes offered in Mario Kart. These will have to wait until the next video. So tune in next time when we see how we will implement more items in the game. You better subscribe if you don't want to miss out on this. See you in the next video and until then I wish you a wonderful day and take care.